Welcome to another episode of Mile Point 3 Garage. Today we are going to look at the Broncos engine bay and talk about basic maintenance. So here we have our 2021 first edition Bronco with a 2.7 liter EcoBoost. So this video will touch on the engine bay, the major maintenance functions that this engine and transmission have, and where everything is located in the engine bay, and also service intervals. And that way you can keep your Bronco running top notch uh, for a long period of time. And so I guess the first question is, what is the break-in period on this 2.7 or even the 2.3 for that matter? And in the owner's manual, uh, I did not find any instructions. When you go online, there are also no instructions for break-in. Really, the only thing Ford says is don't tow it within the first thousand miles. So my, my assumption is at this point, you don't want to put heavy loads on it for the first thousand miles, which sounds pretty uh, consistent with what most break-ins are going to be. With a break-in of just about any engine, obviously you want to have the RPM range uh, going up and down. Try not to stay at any particular speed for an excessive amount of time so that the rings seat correctly. Also, obviously, don't go uh, close to red line. Probably past the first thousand would be, I would guess, something that would be really important to do. As far as I'm concerned, getting an oil change done sooner than later during the break-in period would probably be important because that's where all the contaminants in the motor are coming loose from the manufacturing uh, and also uh, any metals that are going to come loose during the first few hundred miles of the motor are going to be contaminated in the oil as well. So we're actually going to give this an oil change even though we are shy of a thousand miles at this point because it's going to be $40 for an oil change to do it myself. The parts are readily available right now for these vehicles and I will list those parts down in the description. So let's go through the rest of the engine bay and maintenance cycles on this 2.7 so you kind of get an idea of where things at, how often you need to be worried about maintaining these. Also during this overview we're going to talk about the owner's manual, specifically the main maintenance part of the owner's manual. So let's say you don't have your Bronco right now but you want to go through the owner's manual and learn about it. I'll put the link for the owner's manual down in the description. The HTML has hyperlinks essentially for everything. So once you click on engine, it actually runs down through the capacities. You can pull up all the capacities for any motor and you can see how much oil it uses, what type of oil is recommended, uh, what the oil filter number is, so forth and so on. So that'll be down in the description as well. The one thing you're going to check the most is going to be the oil. The three spots that you'll need to know for oil is you've got your dipstick right over here. Okay. And it's yellow right there. You've got your oil filler cap, which is right here. And you pull that off and you'll actually see the oil symbol. And then also the type of oil that you want to put in there, which is 5W30 synthetic. And then also the placement of the oil filter, which is right here. Now this is a top side oil filter, very dissimilar from oil filters that are down in the motor. It is also a paper filter. Uh, instead of a metal can oil filter. Now the oil that you'll want to be using in this is synthetic 5W30. And then of course they're always going to recommend the Motocraft oil. During the warranty on this motor, I'm actually going to be using all Motocraft parts. The Motocraft filter, the number on this one is FL-2062A. And I'm going to put that in the description as well. And it is a paper filter, top side paper filter, just like this. And then it also comes with a gasket kit uh, because the when you put the filter in, you replace three gaskets, a small gasket and two large gaskets in order for the filter casing to actually seal properly. The capacity says seven quarts, but I've been reading a lot that the motors will actually be a little over six quarts. So we'll see when we do our first oil change here in a few days, how much oil it actually takes. This is what I purchased in order to do my oil change. I got a five quart jug. I got two one quart bottles. And then I've also got my Motocraft filter here. The Motocraft filter is half the price of the Mobile One filter and this is what is recommended. And also I got these at Advance Auto and they actually had a deal where if you purchased a five quart bottle, you got this filter for free. Uh, I went to O'Reilly's, they did not have the same promotion. Before checking the oil, you want to get the car up to operating temperature and then you want to let the car sit for about 10 minutes to let all the oil drain back into the vehicle. And then pull and wipe off your dipstick all the way in, pull it all the way out. You can see there the oil on this dipstick is actually right at the second mark right there, which is at the high end. Ford states that you want it between the two dots. And if it is reading anywhere in this checked area right here, 
do not add engine oil because over adding engine oil is worse than running down to this lower dot. But obviously, if you're not registering on the stipstick at all, you will need to add oil. A little bit out of time until you get in in the middle of the checkers. Okay, and that's about 700 miles right there, so it's still super clean. Uh, it does have some dirt in it, you can see. So I think for us, it's time for an oil change, at least for break-in. Now, Ford recommends an oil change every 7,500 miles for normal use. If you have extreme use of this engine, for instance, if you're using it on a lot of dirt roads or in extremely cold or hot temperatures, they recommend that you do it between 3,000 and 5,000 miles. Next would be engine coolant. So the engine coolant's going to be over here on your left hand side or you'll see the max line and then below that's the min line. You want to check your coolant while it is cold and not hot because it actually expands when it's hot. So if it's cold and it's below the low level you want to add coolant by taking off the top cap. Obviously you're going to be checking it when it is cold so there shouldn't be a lot of pressure in there. Don't remove this cap when it's hot. Remember also that the coolant may be above the max level if it's hot and that's okay because once it cools it will drop down, back down below that max. Now Ford states that you want to keep a 50% coolant ratio and you want to use pre-diluted coolant. If you're running in an extreme cold temperatures which is below 20 degrees for long periods of time you want to increase that 50% so that at that point you'll have to do a custom mix. Also Ford recommends a full coolant change at 200,000 miles or 10 years so you actually have quite a long time before you need to do anything with coolant. Right here is where you're going to add windshield washer fluid. So there actually isn't a a fluid level indicator so you can't really see how much fluid you have in there. You'll need to add fluid occasionally. You'll just pour it right in there. Close that up. Easy enough. Brake fluid reservoir is going to be right over here on your right hand side. Obviously there's a cap for adding fluid. There's an indicator for max fluid level which is going to be right there. And then this is where your fuse box is. So you're going to push in on these three tabs right here and then the lid will lift off of your fuse box. And then you have all of the micro fuses that are in there. And there is a legend in your owner's manual as to what fuse goes where. All right, on the right hand side, you have your battery. Your battery is generally gonna last between four and six years, depending on the quality of battery that you have, how well it's kept up. As long as it doesn't go all the way back down to zero charge, you probably should be able to keep this for at least four to six years. And then when you go to replace it, make sure that you spend the money to buy a good battery. Back in the day, I would buy the cheapest battery I could find. And I found myself in a lot of positions where I was out in the backcountry and I had a failed battery issue. Uh, I started replacing it with gold level batteries and I never had that problem again. Not to mention they seem to last a year to two years longer than a cheap battery. This is a maintenance free battery so you don't have to do anything to it but if you do need to get to the positive terminal for something there is a lock on this side. Flip that up and you can get to your positive battery cable right there. Your negative battery cable is already open so you can access that if you're going to be working on the vehicle. Okay back over on the left hand side you have your air filter box right here. Now your air filter is going to be good for 30,000 miles. That's depending on whether or not you're going to be doing a lot of dirt road driving. Obviously the more dirt road driving you do, especially behind other vehicles, the faster you're going to have to replace this. But Ford recommends replacing it at 30,000 miles. You can also pull the filter out and you can use a shop vac on it uh, to get all the loose dirt out of it in between outings if you are in a high dust area. It'll help lengthen the life of your air filter. But in order to access it, you're going to remove these screws right here. This box comes off and you just replace the air filter. Easy enough. As far as the battery is concerned, when if you're going to be doing some electrical work to the vehicle, you always want to remove the negative cable. But with this vehicle, once you do that, it, you actually have to reset a few things. The first thing you have to reset are your windows. They call it window bounce back. If you go into the owner's manual, it'll actually show you how to reset the window so you get the window bounce back correct again. And then the second thing is your, your steering angle sensor has to be reset as well. And there is a very easy process for doing that as well. Other than that, it's just clock and uh, radio are the only two things that you have to reset after that. That is a basic overview of the 2.7 liter EcoBoost. You can find all of this information in your owner's manual, but I was in here anyway, kind of checking on some things, making sure that the oil that we got from the factory was correct and just kind of get my bearings on the engine bay. So I thought I'd film it and let you guys see this as well. I'm going to put down all of the part numbers for the often maintained items in the description so that you can uh, order those online if you want to or if you go to your local part store you at least know what part to get. And we'll be doing our first oil change here uh, in just a little while and we'll show you the process on that. It's pretty straightforward with the uh, filter being on top of the 2.7 liter EcoBoost. You do have to remove the skid plate if you have a skid plate on your 
your Bronco in order to get to the drain plug. But other than that, super easy to maintain. That's a wrap for my point three garage. I hope that you found this informative. If you did, hit the like button and also check the videos on the end screen at the end of the video.